let's go have the perfect day at Disney's Hollywood Studios. We're riding Rise of the Resistance, Slinky Dog Dash, Tower of Terror, and more. And we're also going to use Genie Plus, but also not use Genie Plus. You know what I mean? We are here. I'm going in for early theme park entry, which is a perk of being a resort guest. I took advantage of Quincy filming a resort tour. And uh, so I'm a resort guest today, which is fun. As of right now, only resort guests are allowed in. And I bought Rise of the Resistance this morning. So we're headed to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because that's the other pay per fancy ride. And um, I don't want to pay for that one too. So today at Disney's Hollywood Studios, we're going to be using Genie Plus and some of the fancy rides, but we're also going to use regular entrances so I can show you how to mix and match and have the perfect day and get as much accomplished as possible. Early theme park entry is a perk of Disney World Resort Guests, and it allows you into all four parks 30 minutes prior to park open. So this is all resort guests. They typically will let you physically into the park a little bit earlier than that as well. And it's a great time to take advantage of some rides, especially here because there's so many popular rides. Even though we're going to be using Genie Plus today, there's a lot to get done here and it can involve a lot of strategy. So get yourself a head start and take advantage of that hotel perk. If you can knock out one of the fancy rides during early theme park entry, that's the best use of time in my opinion. Because that way you don't have to pay for that one too. But you know most people are going to Rise. I didn't even want to worry about it. So I bought Rise for later today. And uh, now let's go see how long it takes to ride Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. Start this day off. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has a posted 40 minute wait um, to start the day. Now I will say a lot of times in the mornings, the cast members just put up a number on opening rides based on how busy it usually gets in the morning. So if you get in the line early, it may be under the posted time, but we'll see how long it takes. 40 minutes is a lot lower than it will be for most of the rest of the day. While we're weaving through this line, let's recap what I did this morning quick. Woke up early right at 7 a.m. and booked a Genie Plus Lightning Lane for Slinky Dog Dash. When I clicked it, it said 9.30. When I actually got it, it's 11.25 to 12.25. Then, immediately after, I booked a Rise of the Resistance for later today. I kind of waffled on what time I wanted to go, and I finally picked around 2 o'clock. And then when I actually got it, it was around 6 o'clock. So be quick on both of those. Slinky Dog Dash was out within a minute, maybe two, and Rise of Resistance was gone in about three. So be quick on those. Resort guests, you're really going to be the only ones that take advantage of both of those offerings. 14 minutes after getting in line, I'm working my way into the theater. So like I was saying, attractions all have a number that they assume they're going to get to very quickly and that's what they open with, which is why immediately upon open you'll see like Rise of the Resistance will have a 100 minute wait or Flight of Passage will have a 60 or 75 minute wait. They just know it's going to get there quickly, but if you get there amongst the first people, you probably don't actually hit that wait. So I don't think this is going to be a full 40 minutes, but we will find out. 25 minutes after getting in line, I'm walking into the pre-show. That's when Disney officially stops the clock, so we're off to a great start for this best day. Do you mind helping these good people into the cartoon while to fix this here Loki motive? Sure, Goofy, I can help you with that. Thanks! Be back in a jiffy to pick you all up! <laughs> The premise of this attraction is that you're headed to the Chinese theater to go see the premiere of Mickey and Minnie's new cartoon, Perfect Picnic, which is so cute until Goofy ruins everything and you end up in the cartoon. Hi! So one of my favorite details, if you look at the cast members' costumes, they're different when you're in the theater versus when you're in the cartoon. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was $8 today, which 
is not a lot compared to the 15 for Rise of the Resistance, but we start adding it up. That's, that's a snack. All right, so now that we've checked off Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, great way to start the day. Definitely my recommendation is to use that early theme park entry if you have it to knock out one of the pay per rides. That way you don't have to pay for it. Additionally, saved ourselves some money doing that today. I would recommend the same thing at any of the parks. Go get on uh, Frozen It or Remy over at Epcot. Go get on Space Mountain or Mine Train over at Magic Kingdom. Go get on Flight of Passage or Everest when it reopens at Animal Kingdom. The early theme park entry is over, but there's still a short line over at Tower of Terror, so I'm going to go take advantage of that. My next advice is after you've ridden your first attraction, keep taking advantage of the low weights in the morning and head to another one of the big ones. That way you don't have to worry about getting it on Genie Plus later, or you can ride it twice if you'd like to. What I will say at this park with so many high demand attractions, Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Slinky Dog Dash, Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, Toy Story Mania, and more on Genie Plus, it can be hard to pull the attractions that you want. So if you can knock out one of those early in the morning as well, you're off to a good start. Currently at 9.17 in the morning, I've pinned all the things I want to do today. Uh, Smuggler's Run has a 40 minute wait. I'm going to hope to pull that one on Genie Plus later. Rock and Roller Coaster has a 50 minute wait. Slinky Dog Dash 70, we've got a Genie Plus for that already booked. Rise, two hours, got a lightning lane for that too. Toy Story Mania 35 and Tower of Terror is 20, which is why we're headed to the tower next. Do you want to know something gross? Do you know how they make the cobwebs in attractions such as Tower of Terror and the Haunted Mansion? Basically, whenever they need to make a new one, they spray this hot glue-like substance out of a like backpack gun style thing, think Ghostbusters. As you come in, please go in all that And uh, then natural things cling to it to create the cobweb effect. And by natural things, I do mean including human hair and skin cells. You're welcome. The more you know. And uh, just about 20 minutes after I got in line, I'm in the pre-show. So this has been great. It's been about an hour since I got in the park. We've done two of the biggest rides. Dentro galeria battor in todo momento e por favor vigile a sus niños. Amazing, so fun. I'd like to call attention to the fact that the tower ears are back in stock. I know these were a fan favorite. I certainly snatched up a pair, but just wanted to let you know those are here. I also wanted to point out this Fantasmic t-shirt that I own. Some people have asked me where I got it. Right here. This is also where I got the sweatshirt. But as you can see, there is no sweatshirt left. We can always check here. Tower of Terror check. We've been in the park for less than an hour and a half, done two of the biggest attractions, and now the, all the lines are long. So we're going to use our genie, we're going to use our brains, we're going to see shows, and most importantly, it's time for our first coffee stop. Shaky Jamaica Acquire. This is my favorite cold brew at Disney. It's the black Shaky Jamaica, which you can get at any Joffrey's coffee cart. But this Joffrey's coffee cart also often has a shorter line than the other one um, that's on the way to Pixar. And it certainly usually has a shorter line than Starbucks because a lot of people don't realize it's back here at the exit of Tower. But we're going to take Shaky Jamaica to get breakfast. And we're going to get something for breakfast I doubt you know exists in this park. Look at this 65 minute line we're avoiding. This park is very tricky right now. I will uh, be the first to admit it. There are so many big heavy hitter rides and not a lot of other rides. There's a lot of shows, there's a lot of other great things to do, but people want to do like seven rides and all seven of those rides are gonna have crazy long lines every day. But we're gonna avoid them by Strategy and Genie Plus. So uh, we are now headed to Hollywood Scoops, which is the ice cream shop. And if you're thinking, Molly, ice cream for breakfast? That's wild. Well, it's not what we're getting, but I'm not above it. But we're getting one of my favorite Disney Eats. 
and it's kind of like low-key off the radar that you can get it here for breakfast only. Say hello to the blueberry waffle platter from Hollywood Scoops. Um, this is literally not posted on a menu. You just have to know that they serve this as well as mimosas here in the morning until 1030. So there's three little mini blueberry Mickey waffles. You can see the blueberries. It comes with strawberries and whipped cream. I'm gonna go find somewhere to eat this luxurious breakfast along with my coffee. Now, this secret spot isn't as good as my Animal Kingdom secret spot, but on this little street tucked off of Sunset Boulevard, unless the Beauty and the Beast is dumping from the show being done, which it's not right now because the first show is not till 11, um, this is a great spot to kind of get away from people. You've got a view of Tower of Terror. I've got my literal perfect breakfast of Mickey waffles and cold brew. Um, and there's no seating over here unless you wanted to sit on the wall, I guess. Mickey waffles are so good. I love that these are blueberry Mickey waffles. Like, look at that. My only complaint about these is I wish it wasn't the strawberries in the sauce. I wish it was just fresh strawberries. Um, but the whipped cream is good. It's not like out of a can whipped cream. It tastes like fresh whipped cream. Obviously, I love a shaky Jamaican. If you wanted a savory breakfast, quick breakfast, um, my recommendations would either be the breakfast bowl from Woody's Lunchbox in Toy Storyland or the breakfast Ronto Wrap in Galaxy's Edge. Those are both phenomenal and I love those but those lands are both really crowded and busy and sometimes it's nice to just like have a moment of, of a calm and zen in a theme park and also not a lot of people know these waffles exist so I thought I'd share my little secret but it's only till 10 30 so make sure you get there early finished my waffles I don't want to go too far because I do want to see the 11 o'clock feeding the beast which is in about 25 minutes but real quick I'm gonna pop into this merchandise shop y'all know I love a Disney merchandise shop um, I actually do need something though that maybe you don't know they carry at merchandise shops. That's a good little thing to have. But I also just love looking around. I love this Oliver and Company mood shirt. Like when's the last time you saw Oliver and Company on anything? I also really like the Pegasus, but the Oliver and Company one is good. I bought too many long sleeve things though, and I live here. So obviously I also have to check the ear wall, see if there's anything new. Hmm. Not spotting anything. All right, I'll just buy the thing I need then. Here it is. Did you know at the merchandise shops they sell like things you might have forgotten, like sunscreen or hand sanitizer? Um, and I'm out of hand sanitizer, and surprisingly, it's a dollar fifty, which is like a normal price. It's not a Disney price. So, for a little pro tip, hand sanitizer is definitely not the most exciting Disney World purchase, but it's good to know they sell it at merchandise shops for a reasonable price, um, especially because the hand sanitizer distribution things question mark around the parks have been uh empty a lot of times recently or there's definitely less of them i am headed into beauty and the beast live on stage now this is that 30 minute adaptation of beauty and the beast i absolutely adore it it is a genie plus attraction but you don't need to use lightning lane most days to show up 20 minutes early like i'm doing and you'll be able to snag a seat uh, having Genie Plus doesn't guarantee you a better seat, it just guarantees you a seat. So it's fine to book with Genie Plus, but my recommendation is always to book your big attractions with Genie Plus and then fill in with shows. The spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. Good morning, Belle. Good morning, Monsieur. Where are you off to? The bookshop. I just finished the most wonderful story about being stuck in an ogre. That's nice. Marie, the back ends. Hurry up! We all got more adventure than even she in her wildest imagination could have dreamt. What are you talking about? What's going on? Come on, Mom. Let me check this out. It's turned me down for the last time. No one says no to Gaston. Beauty and the Beast live on stage is so great. 
Beauty and I Cry every time. Like I've not seen Beauty and the Beast before, even though it's been out for over 30 years. There's just something else to cry about, but we don't have time right now. Anyway, great show. Really don't need to use a lightning lane there. Walk in 15, 20 minutes before and you'll get a good seat. And it's very enjoyable. It's a nice place to relax. Also, while we were in there, just as the show was beginning, I was able to book my next lightning lane because the 120 minute rule was up. Because I booked one for Slinky Dog that was so far out, I was able to book another one two hours later um, from when the park opened, which was 9, which is 11. As a quick recap on the 120 minute rule, basically you can book your second Genie Plus Lightning Lane after you've used your first one, if your first one expires because you didn't use it, or it's been 120 minutes um, from when you booked that one or when the park opens. So now I actually have two. I have Smuggler's Run around the same time as my Rise of the Resistance, and I have Slinky Dog, which is just in a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, I got distracted on my way to Toy Story Land because I heard the sweet drummings in the distance of the Pixar Pals Cavalcade. And I thought, I should see the Pixar Pals Cavalcade and my friend Buzz Lightyear before I go to Toy Story Land. How perfect will that be? But Buzz was missing. It was like, hey Incredibles, hey Edmode, hey Sully, hey Green Iron Man, hey Woody, hey Jesse, hey. Where's the Buzz car? What's Buzz doing? Is he busy? Does he not know I'm here? Did you not know it's a perfect day video? I guess one tiny thing can go wrong on a, on a day in the park, and I'll accept that, kind of. Here we are in Toy Story Land. At least it's not sunny today, because the main problem with this land is the fact that there's literally no shade. But also, that's the future home of Roundup Rodeo Barbecue, which Disney recently confirmed is opening this year. TBD on the details, but that's all we got. Should have been, uh, Pizza Planet with characters, if you ask me, but no one does. 60 minutes at Toy Story Mania. We're gonna try and get a lightning lane for that in a little bit. 90 minutes at Slinky Dog. If you want to skip this line, I highly, highly, highly recommend being having your Genie Plus all purchased, ready to go by 7, and um, clicking it right at 7 a.m. on the dot. I love to tell this story about Slinky Dog Dash. When um, my nephew came on his first visit, he wasn't tall enough to ride a bunch of the stuff with his big brother, but we got on Slinky Dog. We got off Slinky Dog and he burst into tears. And I was like, Paxton, what's wrong, pal? Was it scary? And he's just crying and he goes, I'm sad that it's over. And it was so sweet and so endearing. And a cast member heard him and made magic, and they let just me and Paxton go on it again. And it was like one of my favorite Disney World memories. Because we were in a big group of like 13, and you know your big brother gets to do stuff you don't get to do. And it was really sweet that we had like a magical moment, just me and my nephew. But I'll always love this ride, if for no other reason than that. dog dash check i think that attraction is just so cute if you do not buy genie plus or get a lightning lane for it i highly recommend either road dropping it but my real pro tip is to ride it at night the weights will drop or even if they don't you can always get in line as long as the park's still open even like just a few minutes beforehand and this land at night is 
gorgeous. Now that I've ridden Slinky Dog, I think it's time for our next feeding. I'm gonna go grab lunch at one of my kind of underrated faves. This spot used to be pretty terrible and they've really come around with new and better food. So let's go get lunch and then uh, see where the day takes us. As a little extra tip, um, if you ever want to know what time you're able to book another lightning lane, just try and book one. So I just clicked Rock and Roller Coaster and it says, sorry, you can't book one till one o'clock, which would have been two hours after I booked the last one. So you can always keep track by doing that. Here is my lunch. It's the Buffalo Chicken Grilled Cheese from ABC Commissary. They've also got amazing tacos, a couple salads, bowls. They've really upped their game, but I love this grilled cheese. Um, it can come with fries, a salad, or apples. I like whenever they do fruit because you can throw it in your bag usually. Um, and then I just got a nice tea. But this is one of my favorite meals in Hollywood. I like the grilled cheese at Woody's Lunchbox a lot too with the tomato soup. Um, but this place is inside. It's bigger. There's more variety on the menu. So this is a spot maybe you don't know about. The bread is so buttery and garlicky. Just a little heat from that sauce, but it is so creamy and delicious. It's so good. Sandwich consumed. And while I was in there, uh, my two hours was up from the last time I booked a lightning lane. So I fiddle faddled a bit, read, refresh the screen by pulling down over and over. Um, and I was able to pull a rock and roller coaster in about 40 minutes. But I'm gonna go see the Frozen show in the meantime to one, let my stomach settle and two, help kill that 40 minutes. It's a little zigzaggy, but in this park with so many big rides, you kind of have to do that. For the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration is one of my underrated favorites. It's about a 30 minute sing-along show with the Frozen characters and the Frozen music, but the narrators are absolutely hilarious and they change their jokes every time. They make adult jokes, so I love them. This is one, it does have a lightning lane, but usually you can show up 15, 20 minutes early and get a spot, so that's what we're gonna do. Beyond cold, it was frozen. Here it comes, let it go. But don't let go of the space cover. Frozen sing along check. I really do adore that show, it makes me laugh every time. One of the storytellers was like, did you sleep through Arendelle 101? And the other one was like, it was virtual. And that got me really good. I just think it's fun. I think it's a great way to kill some time, get some sitting and some air conditioning. And it worked out perfectly because now it's time for me to go ride Rock and Roller Coaster. Do you ever think about how, if it wasn't Aerosmith, who it should be? We've had this debate before on our team and I think Queen is the winner. Like, wouldn't it be awesome if you were just like taken off to Bohemian Rhapsody or We Are the Champions? Please comment who you think would be an awesome roller coaster soundtrack. There is a single rider line here at Rock and Roller Coaster, which I probably would have used if I hadn't been able to pull a soon lightning lane. Um, but luckily I was able to. Plus I feel like the single rider line can end up being long, not longer than standby usually, but still long, not as fast as lightning lane. and. Most people don't want to split up their party, which is what happens in Single Rider. So I wanted to show you how you can refresh and pull new times. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't leave these people here like this. We can't? Oh, come on, you know how we feel about our fans. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, guys, what do you expect me to do? Is send them all with you? Yeah. Hey, David, how did you Wait a minute, I love that idea. How about some backstage passes? Rock and Roller Coaster done. It was so fun. What a great attraction. I will say that I think Lightning Lane is the way to go right now. Uh, the very nice woman who sat next to me was um, a single rider and she told me she waited almost the full hour in single rider. 
So this is a good one to hit early. After I tapped in at Rock and Roller Coaster, I was able to snag a lightning lane for Toy Story Mania between 3.05 and 4.05. So I've got about 20 minutes till my return time at Toy Story Mania, which is scientifically proven to be enough time for me to get a coffee. Hey, Woody, we're back. Hey, hey Buzz, thanks. Buzz says riding with Slinky Dog on the coaster set right reminds him of flying. Not that he can fly. After all, he is just a toy. Wow, Woody, with that kind of attitude, how are you gonna get anything done? Anyway, it's time to ride Toy Story Mania. It's got a 75 minute wait, yikes. Remember when this was the ride and, and people would like trample others to get paper fast passes because this was the ride? Yeah. The one kind of bummer about using the lightning lane here is you don't see Mr. Potato Head, but that's certainly not a big enough deterrent to make you want to stay in a 75 minute wait. Story Mania check, love it. It's such a fun ride. A few pro tips. In the first room, the barnyard, if you can hit the rat scurrying up the barn, it will flip the barn and there will be a bunch of high scoring targets. In the volcano with the dinosaurs, pop all the squiggly lava volcano balloons um, and the volcano will erupt and there'll be a bunch of high scoring balloons. In the soldier room, if you and another person can both hit those flying plates that come up on either side of your screen at the same time, a cannon will come out and a bunch of targets will be high. And then in the buzz room, if you can get all the aliens on the middle thing to be down at the same time, a monster will open his mouth and you can get a bunch of points that way. So those are some pro tips for you to win next time you play Toy Story Mania. Don't tell anyone I told you and then just go win. Uh, beat your friends and family. And there's nothing quite like the feeling of victory. Now, um, earlier when I booked this Lightning Lane for Toy Story Mania, I decided I also would want a snack. So I went ahead and ordered a snack at Woody's Lunchbox. Woody's Lunchbox is very popular and the slots fill up very quickly. So it's best if you think you want to go there to order in advance. And that way you're not like, oh, I'd like something at Woody's Lunchbox and then look at the times and it's like three hours from the moment. This is a lunchbox tart from Woody's Lunchbox. It's basically like a fancy pop tart. Um, they have a few varieties. This is the lemon blueberry. It's one of my all time favorites and it just came back since the seasonal one left. So I'm excited to bring it back and try it. Um, they also have a raspberry one. They've had a bacon Nutella one before. They have an apple cinnamon in the fall or the Christmas time. It's just such a flaky, buttery, delicious crust. And it's like the gourmet pop tart. It's really good. Try the variety of flavors. They're fun. Other good desserts if you're looking for something. The carrot cake cookie at Trolley Car Cafe. The Wookiee cookie at Backlot Express. Those are awesome cookies as well. But I just love Toy Story and I like this on Fox Tart. And I wanted the lemon one again. Lunchbox tart eaten. Um, I did, after doing Toy Story Mania, make a lightning lane for the next Indiana Jones. Just because that show is very popular since it returned. It is the one show here that fills up pretty quick and it will go to standing room or complete capacity. So I have a lightning lane for the next show of that. But I do have a few minutes before that and I'm gonna pop into Walt Disney Presents on my way over there. This is an often overlooked little walkthrough all about Walt Disney himself. And um, I like to just kind of look around at all the memorabilia and it's a great way to fill some time. Not only is Walt Disney Presents all about Walt himself, um, in a museum style, but there is also a short film at the end called One Man's Dream, which is all about Walt, narrated by Julie Andrews, which like, could it get any better? Sometimes that video does swap out though, they will do previews of upcoming Disney, Pixar, Marvel, uh, Star Wars films, so that's always a great way to kill some time as well. But I just love looking in here, learning a little bit more about Walt, and seeing some real key pieces of Disney history. Like a naked president. Hold on, I'll show you. Oh, I love this concept art by Herb Ryman. He drew the original concept art for the castle here as well. And it's just, I love his style of drawing. It's so pretty. But that's Sleeping Beauty Castle, the baby castle over in Disneyland. That's Herb Ryman's art too. 
Oh, he's just so good. Okay, I'm being distracted. Naked president, here we come. This is Abraham Lincoln from Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, which was a show that debuted at the 1964-65 World's Fair. It, along with Carousel Progress, were the first human audio animatronics they did. It is so cool to me to look inside an audio animatronic. And Lincoln was a personal hero of Walt Disney, so I think this is so cool. This is how they operated it. Isn't this awesome? But now from the old to the new, they've got a new Wish display in here for the Disney Wish, the cruise ship. Yes, I am going on the Wish this summer. Little image of the Wish, the little model of it. Cinderella's gonna be in the foyer. She's beautiful. I love little Lucifer over there. I can't wait. There's a Marvel restaurant, y'all. I am gonna freak out. And the brand new Aqua Mouse, which is a water coaster. It's gonna be awesome. And not a lot of people come down here, like clearly, um, but they usually have costumes down here. So those are the descendants. That's actually a Captain Jack costume from the Pirates movies. And this is actually an Emma Stone costume from Cruella. So very cool in here. If you're a movie buff, Disney buff, history buff, recommend coming to check it out. Hey, Gertie. How you doing, girl? You're so cute. It's time to go see Indy. So this is probably the one show on a regular day I would tell you to do the Lightning Lane just because it's like, Hello! Got a lot of buzz still since it's new. Um, so unlike Frozen or Beating the Beast, if you show up 15 minutes beforehand, you might not make it. So I would either show up 30 or so minutes beforehand, maybe more, or book that lightning lane. spectacular basically the only thing they took out is the guest participation before if you got here early they might have asked you to be an extra in the show and obviously they don't do that right now um, but I love that show it's kind of the only old-school Hollywood Studios thing left because it's showing you how movies are made which is what the whole point of this park was when it opened as MGM and I love it and that music's awesome and they're impressive and it's been really great so it has been filling up like I said this is the one show I do think if you've got Genie Plus this is a good use of a lightning light before we go to our next activity, I would like to acknowledge, did I just go buy a sweatshirt because it's cold today? Yes. Is it colder than it was supposed to be? Also yes. Should I have been more prepared? Probably. Was I? No. Did I use bubble checkout? I did. Was it quick and efficient? It was. Do I regret this? No, it's a tie-dye pizza planet sweatshirt. But that does remind me to tell you, when you're coming during the winter months, pack layers. They're your best friends. Anyway, let's go do another thing. I'd like to go check out the Brown Derby Lounge, which is just the patio here at the Brown Derby. You can order off the menu. They also have some bar bites, cocktail service, um, and I've got one thing on my mind that I would like to eat. So sometimes there is a wait at the Brown Derby Lounge, but you can just give them their your phone number and they'll text you. But sometimes you know someone already sitting here. What are you doing? I was gonna eat a lot. I, I am also here to eat a salad. Would you like to eat a salad with me? I could eat a salad with you. All right, so I crashed Quincy's video and table. <laughs> she, I'm filming B-roll. She's filming B-roll right now for a different video that you can go enjoy. It's a tour of Hollywood Boulevard, but two birds, one table, as the saying goes. Um, so this is the martini flight. It's 17 for the flight as opposed to 15 for one cocktail. Um, you've got a classic gin martini with the olive, a classic vodka martini with the lemon, and a pomegranate martini that's uh, got absolute citron 
pomegranate liqueur and cranberry juice in it. All right, martini time. I'm gonna start with the gin martini because I normally order vodka ones. I like to start with the thing I'm the least excited about. Woo, that is a martini. It's good though, it's a simple classic martini. There's got that olive in there. That is tasty. But yeah, there's, there's gin in there. And the lemon. That's a vodka martini. And it has vodka in it. Again, classic simple flavors. It's just delicious. And the pomegranate. Let's see how sweet it is. Ooh, that's delish. That has definitely a hint of sweetness, but it also is tart because of the cranberry. Um, if I was to get one of these, it might be that one actually, which is surprising even myself, just because it's a little bit more unique than just a classic martini. But when you're at somewhere like the Brown Derby, just to have a classic, like good cocktail. They also do a great old fashioned. Like I said, they've got a margarita flight and they can work with you for whatever you'd like. But I love just sitting here outside on the lounge. I love people watching. Back when they had the Star Wars fashion show, as I called it, some of you may remember that. I loved watching that from sitting right here, but it's just delightful out here. And for my meal, it's probably no surprise that I'm enjoying the famous legendary Brown Derby Cobb salad. Uh, this is one of my favorite meals in all of Disney. It's the same recipe as the original Brown Derby out in California. It's just a chopped Cobb salad. You've got tomatoes, avocado, uh, bacon, turkey, egg, blue cheese, greens. It is fabulous. They're signature French dressing and it is like so delicious. And now salad time. It is so good. Also, how come salads I make at my house are never as good as salads at restaurants? Even though it's literally the same ingredients, but it's just really fresh, crisp, salty bacon, a little bit of that blue cheese flavor. It's a must have for me on a perfect day. It's one of my favorite meals in Disney, like I said, and it's, you know what? Nice to eat a vegetable amidst all the carbs and cheese I consume. Delicious dinner complete. And I have a few minutes. If you remember many moons ago, I booked two Lightning Lanes in Galaxy's Edge at 7 a.m. or 7.01 after I booked Slinky Dog. I booked one for Rise of the Resistance. And then a little bit later, I booked one for Smuggler's Run, but uh, they both overlap. They're both 6.55 to 7.55. So I've got about 10 or so minutes before those kick in. So I'm gonna do one of my favorite other underrated things in this park and go see my friends. You may know them, Kermit, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, Sam, Fozzie Bear. Once, some of us got in a hot debate about who our doppelganger would be if we were Muppets and Breedlove was Janice. Quincy was Gonzo. No, Rizzo. Morgan was Kermit. And I was Miss Piggy. So please share your Muppet doppelganger down in the comments. And I'd love to point out this Easter egg. Pizza Rizzo's right here. And it's the city's top rated pizza, Pizza Rizzo. But watch the sign for a little bit at night and see what it changes to. Love Vision 3D is delightful. It's a really good attraction to do in the middle of the day is when I'd normally recommend doing it just because, oh wait, hold on. Are the, are the Muppets wearing facial coverings? That's very cute. I appreciate their commitment to safety. Love Vision 3D is a very good filler attraction, especially if it's in the middle of the day, if you would like some air conditioning or you're in between lightning lanes or the lines are all really long. This is a really great filler attraction to do it then. What are we going to see in here anyway? It's one of those 3D movies. Put on your glasses, Tabler. Yeah. Hey, 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 look. Look at the guy in the goofy mask. That's not a mask. Oh, sorry, lady. <laughs> and now it's time to go to space with Rise of the Resistance. So Rise of the Resistance, as you probably know, is hands down, no questions asked, miles above the most popular attraction in Walt Disney World. It consistently has a two to three hour wait. And it is a fancy ride, meaning to purchase a Lightning Lane, it's an individual cost of $15 per person. Typically, the Lightning Lanes sell out within minutes 
of it being 7 a.m. when resort guests can buy it, meaning non-resort guests very rarely are going to have the chance to purchase it. If you're a resort guest, I highly recommend buying it. Otherwise, getting here very early for that early theme park admission and rope dropping as early as possible. For my non-resort guests, I recommend rope dropping the regular opening time as it'll still probably be shorter. Last time I did that, I got in in like 45 minutes. As it is currently 105 minutes, it's probably safer to ride it in the morning or get in line last thing at night. But do know this ride breaks a lot for technical difficulties. So I also want to remind you that because this attraction goes down a lot, if you have a lightning lane at the time that it closes, it was closed earlier today for like two hours, um, they'll issue a recovery pass. That means you can ride it later when it comes back up. Um, that does mean the lightning lane can get a little long because then everybody that could have come that whole time comes at once. So you may wait upwards of 45 minutes or an hour in the lightning lane. Recruits, thank you for joining the cause. A covert resistance team led by my friend Finn has infiltrated a First Order Star Destroyer. I hear you're a fine-looking group of recruits. Oh, no time to waste. Let's get you on your way to the general. Black leader, we're picking up an unusual signal. Are you spotting anything? By the authority of the First Order, resistance scum. Now bring down your shields and prepare to be boarded. I got a bad feeling about this. You have what I want. You know the location of the secret base, and I will take it from you. We both will buckle left and right, all back up. But we have a temporary interruption to transport power. Please stay seated. Operations will resume shortly. You ever been about to save the galaxy and it um breaks? So I just loaded into my little transport and all the lights came on and they had us leave because it broke. But they gave us a redemption pass on our magic band to ride it when it comes back up, which they said the Kessar said he's hopeful it'll come up in like 30 minutes. So I'm gonna head over to Smuggler's Run. Get my popcorns, my cat sackos, one of my must-do snacks, and see what's going on. I had booked another Tower of Terror because um, I was able to pull it on Genie Plus because remember earlier I, I just went in standby. So I refreshed a few times and got a Tower of Terror because I was going to ride that, but I'd obviously rather complete rise. So like I said, that attraction goes down a lot. <laughs> it's just so technologically advanced. There's so many different systems at running that it just, it, it happens, it's a bummer. Um, and I understand your disappointment if you're on it or you wanna ride it and it goes down. I get it, I totally get it. My only plea is please don't yell at those cast members. I'm probably gonna start crying talking. There were guests waiting for their recovery screaming at those cast members. And it's, that's not cool. So. They didn't break the ride. Please be gracious. Give what get whatever they give you. And if you don't like that or that doesn't work for you, go and be nice to the guest relations cast members and maybe they can do something about it for you. But please don't scream at cast members. You know what? Let's go ride Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Let's let's go have some fun there and see where we're at with Rise. Also, some of you might be like, why haven't you gone to Oga's Cantina yet? That's part of the best day ever. That's one of the most fun things to do in Hollywood Studios. I totally agree. We have a surprise in a little bit, a, a secret hack 
about Oka's that we're gonna do. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're gonna go aboard the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. I do want to point out this attraction does have single rider. It's not always open, like it's literally not open right now, but um, single rider is a quicker way to ride this attraction than standby. If you do single rider, you're probably going to be the engineer and you're going to miss the pre-show with Hondo Onaka. So if you've ridden it before, maybe go single rider if you want to do it again. But the fun part of this attraction is riding it with your friends and family. So I do recommend doing it in the standby line or the lightning lane for your first time at least. room it's cool to just like be in the Millennium Falcon you know um, but it's a simulator attraction so it may make some people nauseous what I'm trying to say is it's really fun with your friends and family and it's great if you're a diehard Star Wars fan but it's maybe not a must-do if you don't fall into one of those two categories now we are gonna grab one of my favorite snacks ever now before we continue on our adventures and that's the Cat Sacka's Outpost Popcorn Mix, which is the kind of spicy cereal flavored popcorn. So here's my treasure, my beloved Cat Sacka's Outpost Mix. It tastes like spicy tricks and I love it. It's a mix of lemon blueberry pound cake and chili lime popcorns. And I'm gonna eat a little bit of it right now, but I'm also gonna put it in my backpack and save it for an, uh, a little bit later when I'm gonna watch a show. Cause you need popcorn for a show, am I right? It's eight o'clock, there's an hour left of park time, but we have a special after hour surprise. I came back over by Rise because the cast member said it would be about half an hour, hopefully, fingers crossed when it was back up, and it's been about that time. A good way to know if a ride is gonna come back up, hopefully, is watch the cast members and see if they assemble, like the Avengers. Um, and I can see the cast members getting the signs out, getting the mics on, kind of moving to their positions. They may just be organizing the crowd. It's not open. We are going to organize everything. Organize. Anyone Good. with Good. a return time, you're I have one of those. Right over here okay. My friend Cole. And we're going to start organizing into a line. I love this a line. It's not open yet. We love We do not know when we will reopen. We love organization. We're trying to organize. I appreciate what they're doing. Getting back in line and hopefully it'll reopen soon. You could, if you were not happy with these accommodations, if you wanted a refund, if you wanted to change it to another attraction, again, you could go talk to guest relations or guest experience, be very nice to them, and they may accommodate. But speaking as someone who was in guest relations for many years, your tone of voice has a lot to do with how much recovery I'm going to give you. You know that meme from The Office where it's like, everybody stay calm, it's happening! <laughs> That's literally the energy right now, but we are being let in. <laughs> Perfect timing too, because the show I want to see is at 8.40, so knock on wood somewhere that nothing else goes wrong. Now, I will say um, they will still accommodate the, the standby line. You can still jump in line at the very end of the night, but the standby line will go up when there's been a downtime because they are going to prioritize the people that spent $15 over those who didn't that's the way it's always been with fast pass as well they always prioritize the fast pass over the standby so just keep in mind the standby line might create an illusion that it's not that long but it's still gonna take a long time
gets me every time. I've realized it's two things that get me. Despite being lucky enough to have written it multiple times. It's the music, because John Williams is the GOAT. And it's hearing other people on it. First of all, or side note, 70 minute post to wait right now. But um, I love hearing other guests experience it for the first time. And it's just everybody gets off that attraction like blown away and amazed. And it's just cool to like eavesdrop on other people's family moments. That's what I'm all about because I'm here alone. Um, so, oh, so good. It's so good. I'm so glad it came back up. Thank you to the cast members for working diligently to get it back up. I will say um, it was B mode for Kylo Ren. So Kylo Ren, the big animatronic at the end wasn't working. He was projected outside. So my assumption is that was what was wrong. Two details I want to talk about on that attraction that not a lot of people talk about. Obviously, there's great animatronics. Um, the, the whole technology is cool. The system, it's all great. It's all cool. But two things that I love, two moments I love, not a lot of people talk about. One, the moment in the interrogation room when Kylo uses the force and it feels like you can feel the energy shift in that interrogation chamber. Very cool. And two, when you crash land in your escape pod, it changes with what time of day it is outside because you're crash landing on Batu. So it was night just now and it'll be day. It'll be afternoon. And that's just a cool thing not a lot of people talk about. Somehow we still have a little more to do and we're hurrying to our next thing. While there's not a big nighttime spectacular here at this point, the Star Wars fireworks haven't come back. Phantasmic hasn't come back yet. There are still two smaller nighttime things you can enjoy. They're both projection shows on the Chinese theater. The first is called Disney Movie Magic and it celebrates all of Disney movies. Lots of live action, a little bit of Marvel, a little bit of Star Wars, Indiana Jones, that sort of thing. And the second one is called Wonderful World of Animation and it celebrates animation and it has clips from every animated film. I'm actually curious, I haven't watched it since Encanto came out to see if Encanto's in it. But before, when it came out, it had a clip of every single live action Disney and Pixar feature film. So they're both just like fun montages. I love a montage. And so I'm going to go catch those before our late night surprise. love those projection shows I think they're so underrated you can walk right up and get a great spot I did and at the end of the second one it ends with Walt saying I hope we never lose sight of one thing it was all started by a mouse and then Steamboat Willie comes on and like look at me this is ridiculous but it's really cute and really fun if you're gonna be here late anyway I love these shows they're very underrated and there is a little firework action but dramatic I am being, but they're great. And they really recognize a lot of films that you don't see a lot of. There's like a Big Hero 6 segment and an Emperor's New Groove segment. And it's like, it's nice to see some underrated films get some love too. Um, but I promised you one last surprise, so let's go before I just turn into a puddle right here outside the theater. First things first, I'm very excited to walk back through Toy Story Land at night, even though everything's closed. The last final guests are wrapping up Slinky, but it's just so cool in this land at night. This is why I'm saying, if you're not going to use Genie, ride Slinky at night, because look how cool it is. So the secret surprise, friends, is that you can make Oga's reservations after the park has closed. 
till about 945 or so, you can actually have it. I think 955 is the last one. You can actually make an Oga's reservation. Even though the park closed at 9, you will be allowed to walk through Toy Story Land, get some awesome pictures there, and then through a nearly empty Galaxy's Edge at night, and then go into Oga's Cantina. And how cool is this to be in a basically empty Galaxy's Edge? There's a bunch of people out here with their lightsabers taking pictures and you can go into Oga's late. So my recommendation, if Oga's is on your list, try and get one late. You know, it's a great place to go during the day, but you could spend the time you're going there to Baseline or to Brown Derby Lounge, and then you can have a little late night awesome fun. This is maybe a better tip for adults um, who want to have a last cocktail or who can stay up this late, but this is a really, really cool thing that you can do that not a lot of people realize. They've got all kinds of drink concoctions. Now you can't just come up to the bar and order a Jack and Coke. All the drinks are on tap and they just pour them. But there's the fuzzy time time that makes your mouth numb. There's the Jedi mind trick. There's blue wine. Um, tonight though, I went for the Gold Squadron Lager, which is a all, they have four different beers in here and they're all brewed specifically for Galaxy's Edge. And you know me, if a beer is brewed specifically for a theme park, I want to drink it. Ooh, it's good. I haven't had this one in a while. It's very light. It's just a little bit floral from the lavender. It mostly tastes like a light beer with a little fruity twist, but it's very good. If you're a Star Wars fan, if you want a kind of like fun dive bar feel, and I think it's really fun that you can do it this late. So this is a must do if you're a Star Wars fan for sure. Late night Oga is the perfect way to end the perfect day in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and we did have an awesome day. We rode all the major attractions, including Rise of the Resistance, like one and a half times. We ate some really great treats, saw some great entertainment. It was such a fun day. Now, don't forget, everyone's version of a perfect day is going to be a little bit different. Swap in different food items, swap in different filler attractions. Um, maybe you really want to do Lightning McQueen Racing Academy or Star Tours or something I didn't do. Swap that in when I was using some of the filler attractions, like Muppets or something. Some of the shows but hopefully this video is helpful to show you some tips and tricks on how to best move around Hollywood Studios which is for sure the hardest Disney park um, to navigate right now so some of the top tricks we learned in this video make sure if you're using Genie Plus to be up and at and ready to go right at 7 a.m. highly recommend Slinky Dog Dash as your first book if you are a resort guest make sure you book Rise of the Resistance right after you do Slinky Dog Dash and don't dilly dally with what time you want have a time you want to ride it in mind and book it as soon as possible again it sold out in three minutes this morning if you are not a Disney World Resort guest, I still recommend checking the wait at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Um, otherwise, look at doing Smuggler's Run or something on Sunset. If you are buying Genie Plus, in my opinion, if you can get five of the big rides done with Genie Plus, to me, that's worth the cost. I know it sucks that you do have to pay money for it now, but I would rather pay $15 than wait in really long lines all day. And you saw how long the lines were at this park. It's just so popular with so many great rides. That decision about Genie Plus is going to vary family by family. I know I'm just one person, so it's less significant of a cost than if I was a family of four. But hopefully this video showed you how to both use Genie Plus and fill in with some other things like incredible shows um, and entertainment offerings. We have a full video of me navigating Genie Plus just in this park that we'll link for you. We have a Genie Plus Park Hopper video that we'll link for you. Stay tuned for Perfect Day in the other parks. But in the meantime, friends, thank you for watching and go watch my Perfect Day in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Bye to the Spires.